Hi there, and welcome to the first of my videos that I'm going to do where I'm talking about milk and the milk industry and the impact of milk protein on the human body. Now, excuse the white shirt, it's totally incidental to the idea of me talking about milk today. The first item that I'm going to be looking at as far as the milk is concerned is the hormones within milk and their effects in the human body. Now it's well known that for many years a chemical substance called RBGH, bovine growth, growth hormone, has been injected into cows to increase the volumes of milk production. It's a chemical that was developed by Monsanto but after both Canada and the European Union banned the use of bovine growth hormone because of its direct link to both breast and prostate cancer, Monsanto then decided to sell the, the bovine growth hormone onto another pharmaceutical company by the name of Eli Lilly. You have this entire industry that is not going to just pack up and go away. This is a business. And Eli Lilly was then able to analyze the compound in greater detail. And after analyzing the compound in greater detail, they were able to utilize chemicals within that product to produce drugs that can be used to not only reduce the chances of getting the cancers from that are caused by the growth hormone, but also drugs that can be used for the treatment of those self-same cancers. So let's just unpack this quickly. Monsanto develops a drug that's been directly linked to um, two of the most common forms of cancer. When the drug gets banned in two major regions of the world, they sell it onto another company which in turn uses it to produce drugs to combat the effects of this chemical. So instead of removing the chemical from the food chain in its entirety, what Monsanto and Eli Lilly have effectively done is increase the production of the chemical but at the same time produce the drugs that will combat the effects of the chemical so which means that they scoring as far as their profits are concerned from producing the drug that's, that's harmful to you and at the same time the they're scoring on their profits when they are selling to you the drugs to combat the effects of bovine growth hormone in the first place. And how do they manage to do this so effectively? By greatly influencing the decision makers and the policy makers. I'm including a short clip over here to show exactly how this takes place. With the effects of bovine growth hormone, the artificial hormone that farmers were injecting into their cows so that they would produce more milk. With Monsanto, I didn't realize how effectively a corporation could work to get something on the marketplace. The levels of coordination they had to have. They had to get university professors into the fold. They had to get experts into the fold. They had to get reporters into the fold. They had to get the public into the fold. And of course the FDA, let's not leave them out. They had to get the federal regulators convinced that this was a fine and safe product um, to get it onto the marketplace. And they did that. They did that very, very well. It's a great time to be a high-producing cow. Pozilac One Step, bovine somatotropin by Monsanto. The federal government basically rubber-stamped it before they put it on the marketplace. The longest test they did for human toxicity was 90 days on 30 rats. Pozilac is the single most tested new product in history and is now available to you specifically so you can increase your profit potential. 
and then either Monsanto misreported the results to the FDA or the FDA didn't bother to look in depth at Monsanto's own studies. The scientists within Health Canada looked very carefully at bovine growth hormone and came to very different conclusions than the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S. did. Monsanto's engineered growth hormone did not comply with safety requirements. It could be absorbed by the body and therefore did have implications for human health. Mysteriously, that conclusion was deleted from the final published version of their report. They so you see that? Now, just to round off the video, I'm going to be including another short clip that shows the Eli Lilly and Monsanto bovine growth hormone and cancer drug connection. It's a short advert that was put together, but it shows really clearly what I'm talking about. How do you like your coffee, Sharon? With cream, please. I've been having such a tough time these days with the stock market the way it is. John and I have been shifting our investments to healthcare companies. We just bought some shares of the pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly. They make breast cancer drugs both to treat the disease and reduce the risk of people getting it. Did you know Eli Lilly also makes RBGH? RBGH? What's that? It's a synthetic hormone given to dairy cows. They sell it under the name Pauzolac. It increases the risk of cancer in people who drink milk made from cows treated with it. In fact, companies like General Mills and Walmart have stopped using milk made with RBGH in their products. And Canada and the European Union have even banned it. That's probably why Monsanto sold it to Eli Lilly in the first place. So Eli Lilly is making profits from cancer drugs and a substance that could increase the risk of people getting cancer? Yeah. So Eli Lilly is milking cancer. That's it for this time. Please post your comments and questions down below. And remember to click the like button, share this out amongst your friends, and click the big red subscribe button that you'll either find down below the, the video over here on, on the left hand side, or up in the top right hand corner as well. And click either of those two red subscribe buttons that way you can stay connected and up to date on new videos as I post them on a week to week basis. Stay carved up, stay safe out there, see you next time, cheers.